Okay, welcome to today's presentation. I'm Terry. We're also met by Tim, Monique, and Shelly. We are going to be talking about the geography and the effects of plate tectonics with Pakistan. What does the future hold and why do we care? The pl uh, plate boundaries are notorious for being the most active fault lines in the world. There is almost constant movement of 4 to 5 centimeters a year, with one plate being forced below the other. Unfortunately for Pakistan, it sits right between the Eurasian plate and the Indian plate. The Indian plate is being forced below the more dense Eurasian plate, causing an uplift to one side, while the other is being lost beneath the Earth's crust. The earthquakes in Pakistan and parts of India and Afghanistan are the direct result of the convergence between these two plate boundaries. Slide. With the help of time-lapse photography, I have included a short film to illustrate the movement of plate tectonics. The Indian plate has been moving for more than 70 million years toward the Eurasian plate and will continue for the foreseeable future. It is this very collision that has created some of the largest mountain ranges and the most active fault line in the world. Here we have the Himalayas. This is the Karakoram, uh, Pamir, and the Hindu Kush. Pakistan has a very long history of devastating earthquakes that date back as far as 893 with the Zhungzhai Lower Sindai earthquake, 8.0 magnitude, killing 150,000 people. From 1668 to 2015, there has been more than 20 major earthquakes ranging from 6.2 to 8.0 magnitude. Pakistan doesn't just experience major earthquakes that kill thousands of people. Pakistan and nearby areas are plagued weekly with small tremors that amount to 190 earthquakes a year. These plates have been moving for millions of years and will continue to be moving and continue to cause damage for the foreseeable future. Let's go to Shelley and see how this affects Pakistan and how it affects you. Okay, so with some safety concerns about earthquakes and, and how damage from past earthquakes could lead to more deaths in the future. Um, this is what we will be talking about next. Slide. So it would seem that a major part of future safety concerns would be the integrity of the buildings. Um, there have been many accounts of visible damage to walls and surrounding areas, such as large cracks in the walls and chunks of plaster lying on the ground outside of buildings as well. Slide. Um, people who have, who have observed earthquakes in Pakistan explain that in terms of death and destruction of property, the Kashmir earthquake is the greatest single tragedy in the country of Pakistan has faced. The Kashmir earthquake has damaged or collapsed more than 0.6 million buildings, leaving 3.5 million shelterless. With the winters in Pakistan being very unforgiving, it was difficult to begin reconstruction of the country. Slide. Um, so how to avoid such damage in the future? The approach to reconstruction was to create earthquake resistant architecture because the current buildings and homes were not sustaining the effects of the earthquakes which led to several additional deaths and losses of homes. More than 90% of human fatalities were caused by the buildings themselves in the 2005 Kashmir earthquake. Observations of the damage after the Kashmir earthquake showed incredible destruction that could have been avoided with the awareness of proper construction methods. Because so many people are at risk for further harm after earthquakes such as this one, the only way to avoid harm and to ensure future safety is to become familiar with proper construction methods. Why? Um, the people of Pakistan are highly realistic and earthquakes are a sign to them that God is punishing the sinners. Therefore, earthquake safety is not only a technical problem but a sociocultural one as well. 
that has to do a lot with a person's faith, religion, fatal fatalism, and their interpretation and understanding of natural phenomenon. Without understanding these issues, earthquake safety cannot be implemented in a sustainable way. Lives will continue to be lost if people do not understand the cause and effect of earthquakes. There is an incredible need for a proper knowledge of construction when it comes to rebuilding what they have lost and sustaining what they have. When 90% of the fatalities are due to poor building construction, the future safety of the people is at large risk if they do not attain the proper knowledge to make a change in the way that they build. Let's um, go to Tim now. Economics. Hi guys, this is Tim and we're going to talk a little bit about earthquake economics. In 2005, an earthquake struck Pakistan on October 8, 2005 that had devastating effects. It killed over 73,000 people and severely injuring 70,000 more people, as well as leaving 2.8 million without homes. Azad, Jammu, and Kashmir and the eastern provinces were hit the hardest, causing the most damage economically, damaging assets and infrastructure with their social services damaged, as well as delivery, commerce, and communications were destroyed or down. Women and children in lower economic parts of the country have suffered the most. The overall cost of earthquake is estimated to cost approximately 5.2 billion in US dollars, which will include estimates costs for relief, livelihood, support for victims, and rebuilding costs. This report is focused on information uh, of on the damage and costs to rebuild. In other reports entitled Early Recovery Framework, which was led by the United Nations, these two reports have been written to help clean up and a firm plan on how they will clean up and help the country rebuild. This assessment report reinforces the need for the country to take into account guiding principles, including quickly rebuilding the livelihoods, independence, and self-sufficiency, subsidiaries, and decentralization of the people. It is focused on the most disadvantaged of the people getting development gains, making easier for the country to be able to handle the recovery process, giving Pakistan a greater chance to handle disasters in the future, helping their people to get involved in private and, and, and business sectors. In September, on September, September 2013, an, another quake hit in Baluchistan. Because of being in a rural area, there was no, not as many casualties as the 2005 quake. It was a 7.7 .7 quake on the Richter scale, and 825 people lost their lives. And it is said to be the eighth largest in the last five years. This earthquake was the deadliest earthquake since the Japan tsunami, and the estimated economic cost will be in the range of 75 million to 170. 117 million. These quakes not only affect Pakistan, but it puts a bind on all the international companies and countries because of the aid we must need, we must send to help them. Now it's on to Monique. Pakistan's natural disasters, imports, and exports. Why should I be concerned? When a natural disaster strikes the infrastructure of a people is affected. As the infrastructure of a people is affected, so then becomes their nation. When the nation becomes affected, so then does their neighbors. Those they do business with and eventually the world as a whole. The United States is a huge exporter market of the Pakistani goods. They account for 28.4% of all the Pakistanis exports followed by the UK and Germany. On the flip side, over 40% of Pakistanis imports come from the USA, Japan, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Germany, UK, and Malaysia. Saudi Arabia is the major supplier followed by the USA. As we have learned thus far, there are many reasons why Pakistan seems to be a hot spot for earthquakes. Pakistan also in the past has suffered devastating effects of flooding as well. These natural disasters affect the production of the products they export. In some ways, this is good for Pakistan because it drives up the price for the lean products. However, this is bad for all the other nations involved in the world and th that use their products. 
Pakistan is a very poor country that has a hard time recovering from the natural disasters and often needs outside assistance to recover. This can lead to compounding debt and hardship on the nation. It can also open up the country to those that may have ulterior motives, such as the Taliban. Those who offer aid and support to Pakistan can affect their export and import markets. Pakistan and a whole many other nations could be affected by this, not to mention the fact that they have nuclear weapons that could easily fall into the hands of those that may not have the world's freedoms at heart. These are all just some of the main concerns that, we, that may affect our own future and why Pakistan's natural disasters should be a concern for us all. Okay, thank you for joining us for our presentation. Here are our references. Did you, okay. Did you guys hear a ton of my...